So, do you want oh, to tell sure. the story of the time Stephen Hawking ran over your foot? Oh my god, it wasn't <laughs> Stephen Hawking. <laughs> right, so, this was when I lived in my old town, Harrogate, North Yorkshire. It was, I was, think I was about seven, so quite a while ago. And uh, it was a very busy day, it was a summer, very nice. So I was out on my scooter with some shorts. Uh, I was riding along next to my mum. Uh, it was so busy that you couldn't actually move from the crowd. Like, you had to move with the sea of people. Because there was like there was people in front, people to the side, people behind, all of that. You just had to keep moving, otherwise you got trampled. And there was this guy in an electric wheelchair stuck behind us, and we felt really bad initially, because obviously, like if we could, we would have moved out of the way for this person. What I mean, we felt bad for him initially. He kept grumbling, and eventually, uh, he decided to run over my leg to try and get in front of us. And obviously, everyone shouted, at, started shouting at him, including my mother, calling him several profane words. What the fuck are you doing to my son? Get off! Like, get the fuck off of him! Stuff like that. And this guy is obviously screaming back. Oh, your your son slowed down. Like, and she was like, Why the fuck would he slow down? We can't slow down, you prick! And like, other people start joining in, shouting at him because there's this guy parked on a seven-year-old's leg, aka me which is about 120 kilograms worth of electric wheelchair, plus however heavy that man is, probably about another 80 kilograms, on top of my, my little, poor, fragile seven-year-old leg. While everyone's shouting, some guy from the, the co-op that was next to us realises that there is obviously an issue because this guy is parked on my leg. Someone finally realised, ran out from the co-op and said, get this like prick off the, guys, off the kid's leg. And they were like, oh yeah, sure. Like, it, like everyone just had a eureka moment, like fucking hell. So they pick this guy up, uh, or, like the whole wheelchair up, off of my leg. And the manager of the co-op actually comes out and he's like, oh, so, come inside, we'll, we'll help you. And he's like, he says to the, the guy in the wheelchair, right, stay the fuck there. Um, so I get dragged inside. They basically stick my leg into one of their freezers that they cleaned out for me. And they put some bag of frozen peas on my leg and my ankle because the weight of the, the wheelchair was actually causing my blood to become deoxygenated. Uh, Basically, uh, my the circulation was being cut off to my leg. Yeah, the circulation was being cut off to my leg, and my uh, my leg was cramping, and uh, my my ankle was bright blue and it was swollen where he'd just run over it. To reduce the swelling, I got some frozen peas and I think some. Uh, Bird's eye fish sticks, that's what's... Yeah, okay. That went, that went on my big toe. Yeah, fish sticks, save the day. <laughs> Stephen Hawking and fish sticks. <laughs> they go back outside to go talk to this guy because they've just rung the police because it's uh, it's like some sort of assault or they're, they're like trying to clear it up because this guy obviously shouldn't have done it. And they go outside, the guy's fucking buggered off. He's like, sped it. Like, and this is like a really long, like, narrow street where with only, like, obviously two ways to go. And it's very difficult to turn around, obviously, because it was very busy. He must have fucking run over s several other people, at least. Uh, so the, in about three days' time, the police actually come to visit me. Uh, they ask if my leg's better, and like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And um, they said, since uh, we don't actually know who the guy is, and he actually went, we're going to actually have to class this as a hit-and-run case. So uh, I got hit and ran by a disabled guy in a wheelchair. So... Uh, I've noticed to stop myself making a lot of noise, I'll raspberry, but I don't raspberry properly, so it just sounds like I'm choking on my own tongue. That reminds me of the story of when I dislocated my jaw. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on then. Well, so, when I was young, I was an athletic little boy, surprisingly enough, and I, I used to be in a football, uh, with a proper football league, it was under-16s. Uh, we were up against this this one team. Who, and their striker was a big, big, big lad. Doughty was actually under 16, but still. I was the centre-back at the time. Uh, obviously, I have to go in for the tackle once in a while. Yeah, this guy basically just shoulder barges me. And because he's so fucking brawny and just lanky as a kid as well, he just fucking shoulder barges me into the face. I go down and I, I take a couple of uh, games out because my jaw is just in so much pain. Uh, oh, yeah, I sit in for the final, but unfortunately we lost it. But we played well, even though we lost 2-0. It was, it was a good game, good game. Uh, the next morning, my jaw's still hurting. A small part of me is just deciding, ooh, you know what we should do? We should we should have cereal. We haven't had that in ages. And I, I only eat cereal, like, I don't know, three times a year. I just don't know why. I just don't tend to eat cereal. 
I decide to get some Frosties, a bowl full of Frosties, a bunch of good old milk. Um, I get my big old, big old spoon, big old, big old novelty spoon. It's slightly bigger than the tablespoon. I take a massive fucking mouthful, and I hear like a pop kind of rip sound, and my dr- my jaw, my left side of my jaw, just kind of drops about three inches. I hurt like fuck. I dropped my bowl uh, of cereal because it was in so much pain that I got a sugary, milky mess all over my bed. But I was more focused on, you know, the whole the whole fact that the left side of my jaw just kind of detached from my face. I'm trying to hold my jaw back in place, which is obviously the wrong thing to do because it's hurting like fuck. And I run t- like immediately to my mum's room because it's like it's like morning. It's like I don't know nine a.m. She actually found it funny. She was laughing. Thanks, mum. I'm screaming there while fucking frosties and milk is dribbling out of my mouth. Uh, I basically look like the elephant man because I can't speak properly. I'm just going like fucking spitting out milk and pieces of sugar coated cornflake. Very dignified. Looking like the elephant man with a breakfast dilemma. So yeah, we decided to go to the doctors and they're like, I had to push out the remainder of my breakfast out of my mouth with my tongue because I could not use my jaw to like swivel it out to go to the doctor so he could have a look inside of it. Like it, it was mush at this point. Like if you think of wet bread, which is disgusting, it was basically like just my mouth was full of that. It's just mulch at this point. <laughs> and then we go to the doctors and they're like, well, we're just going to have to hold your jaw back in place and then hope for the best because they couldn't locate the dislocation as such. And I thought, well, the mandible's only like, you know, one part. But they just put a head brace on me and a week later I was a bit better. My jaw still fucking hurt for about a couple of weeks after though. That was the story how I dislocated my jaw on eating some breakfast. You know, I can't slow down, you can't hold back, oh you know, I wish I could. You know, there ain't no rest for the wicked until we close our eyes for good. Not even 50 minutes later after walking down the street, I saw a shadow of man creep out of sight. He put a gun on the head because the bed is very clear.